Now, if you're using one of the bigger runtimes like Tokio, it's running multiple queues, and you um, benefit from uh, letting Tokio run multiple queues at once. If one um, CPU finds itself with nothing to do, it can work still. It can look and say, hey, that other CPU has a bunch of stuff that needs processing we haven't, it hasn't got to yet. Grab some of it, do it, and you end up with truly superb performance, which is why uh, so many of the top performing web servers wind up being written in Rust. Um, work stealing is uh, fun to implement. If you ever want to write it yourself, check out the Crossbeam crate. It has a great implementation that's quite readable and quite usable. And so now you've effectively got the same thing as running a number of Node.js instances that uh, as you have CPUs, because you have an async queue on each one. But from the point of view of actually writing your async code, it's completely transparent. You don't need to know about you don't need to know about that. It scales it up. Um, it runs really fast. All right, so let's talk a little bit about runtimes and executors. I get you know the basic theory of what is async. Um, so let's have a look at how it works with Rust. So with a lot of languages, um, the async strategy is baked in. Like um, this is great as long as what you're writing matches roughly what the language envisaged. So most of the time, when you're uh, creating a program that checks a bunch of databases, tries to keep a high performance web server fed, then that's the set of choices the language made. But you might also be trying to cram all of this down and you're actually talking to a bunch of industrial control system, but you need to fit on a tiny little microcontroller. Well, that's not going to work so well when you're using um, a really large system that is designed to scale all the way out to thousands and thousands of systems. So Rust and also C++ uh, made the decision that they'd implement the plumbing for async. They design it in such a way that async doesn't um, impose a requirement on allocating memory. So it can be scaled all the way down to tiny little embedded services. And then you leave the actual implementation of um, the two parts of the runtime, which we'll talk about in a second, to uh, up, up, to the implement, um, up to the design of a package that will implement it for you. And Rust, um, I usually use Takio. Takio is designed to go big and can also go a little small. But there's a few runtimes that can go down, um, ditch the whole standard library, and produce tiny, tiny, tiny binaries that you could run um, easily on embedded devices, but not lose the flexibility of being able to use run of being able to use async to allow you to uh, easily co readily communicate with network devices. Um, it's no coincidence that five of Tech Empower's 10 fastest web servers are built on Rust, and four out of five of those make use of the built-in async system. All right, so runtimes, what do you have to choose from? Takio is my personal favorite when I'm building an enterprise project. It pretty much is a build, I do everything high performance runtime. It's re-implemented large parts of the um, overall standard library to um, provide um, high performance asynchronous version. Um, and it does this because the runtime works the way we described with queues. It also has <coughs> um, it also has a reactor which handles which is basically an event driven system. This file is ready, this network request is ready, this network request is pending. And its reactor is built for high performance and mirrors the Rust standard library. Async standard does the same thing. It's uh, slightly slower velocity of development. It's moving more towards finding the commonalities that can eventually end up in the standard library. That was its goal. That's why they chose the name. It's always good to have some competition. So Tokyo and async standard compete for uh, top dog in terms of performance. There's a runtime called Futures that is missing the um, IO reactor system. And that's OK. It was originally built as a proof of concept for how to get an executor going. It's evolved into a giant collection of really helpful utilities and a tiny little executor you can use if you're writing a mostly synchronous program, but you've got something that's async that you need to run, put in your program. Futures is a great choice to drop in, run that little async stuff, carry on. You can mix the two worlds that way. Small, S-M-O-L, is worth mentioning because if you just need 
to um, cram your async service down to run in something tiny. Small is built around that, makes it as small as humanly possible. And there's one called PASTS, which uh, focuses really hard on minimizing memory allocations, uh, working well in embedded, and also in WebAssembly. So if you're wanting to write in a browser, um, <clears throat> run some WebAssembly in the browser, but make sure um, take advantage of the fact that um, you know, a WebAssembly code can be really fast in the browser, but also not suffer from the fact that WebAssembly threads work differently from Rust threads, and you start to run into a bit of an impedance mismatch when you start trying to use both. Pasts will give you the tools that you need. Now, for the rest of this talk, I'm going to focus on Tokyo because it's what I'm most familiar with, most comfortable with, and it's probably what you need to actually start making use of Rust in your um, Rust and async. In your day-to-day -day workflow, start producing services quickly. Um, um, you will find that an awful lot of stacks start with Takio, add Hyper for HTTP, Tower for service management, and the web server Axum and Actix being the two most popular ones typically sit on top. You can mix and match these as you need them. You can go without them and write the services yourself. Takio is quite capable of letting you go all the way down to the TCP layer if you want and implement your network protocol from scratch. All right, so let's take a very quick look at how you write some async. All right, for the example um, in, the, in the repo, um, we're using the futures crate, um, uh, 0.3.28 being the most recent version. I just add it with cargo add futures and let it do its thing. And if you look at the code that we have there, um, we bring in futures executor block on. So what is that block on? Block on is an inversion of control. You're saying, okay, futures, I'm going to give you the first asynchronous function to run. It's up to you to provide the runtime environment, provide everything that's um, needed to run, let it run. When, when that async program exits, then stop blocking, stop, stop holding control, and we'll carry on just like we're a normal synchronous program. 